the right size vehicle for the right application. Well, is that what we're looking at here? Richard, why don't you tell us what Toyota Boshoku is doing? Okay. So uh, my name is Richard Chung. I'm the chief branding officer at Toyota Boshoku. And uh, what we have here is two new concepts for year 2030, uh, ride share and commercial space on real. Uh, Toyota Boshoku is a uh, Toyota group company, but actually we are the genesis of the Toyota history. Everything started from Toyota Boshoku, and we were in the looming business. And from there, Toyota Motor came out as a spin-off company, and then now, of course, the rest of the history. And we are currently an interior supplier, so we supply seats and interior to Toyota and Lexus uh, vehicles globally, but also other uh, customers such as BMW and so forth. Looks like you're demonstrating kind of the whole product beyond just the interior. Yeah, so what we are showing here is the scenario of autonomous technology being uh, commercially available and becomes a mainstream transportation mode, if you will, or technology by year 2030. Right now we, we're seeing uh, tested vehicles running around in San Francisco or Phoenix or in, in China. They're rolled out in all the major cities. So by 2030, I think we will see a level four type of ride share vehicles. What we are doing is we're preparing for that. Vehicles going to run around, but what happens to the inside? Because the consumers are more interested about the experience in the vehicle, not Right. They're going to take for granted the car is going to drive itself. So we wanted to provide to diverse range of customers with the versatility of being able to configure different needs for the consumer experience. Our theme for this vehicle, MX221, is diversatility. So it's combined word of diversity and versatility. So when we say diversatility, uh, we were... In we want to be inclusive of all the consumers. Yeah, I noticed the wheelchair yesterday right on your stand. Correct. So we designed specifically our own wheelchair because today the wheelchairs are pretty much bent pipe construction. And, and in, a, in a vehicle crash situation, it will disagree and integrate. Uh, so what, what you wanted to do is not only get the person in on board, but also keep them safe. Uh, by designing our seat, uh, you, the, the wheelchair based on seat structure. And to the, today, the automotive seats uh, withstand up to 40 or 50 Gs of impact and still be able to protect the occupant. So based on that, we're uh, designing the wheelchair with our seat structure and then as a basis. And then we put the wheel on with the power motorized uh, wheel uh, so that uh, uh, the user can easily uh, get up to the ramp and get on board. Now, the onboarding process is... Before we get to the onboarding, it seems like that in itself is a revolutionary development. It seems like you'd need to have some level of standardization, ideally, so you could have different manufacturers of wheelchairs, etc. Correct. So what we are proposing is using our uh, patented uh, easy docking system. Uh, so the wheelchair is built in with the seat, seat grade uh, latching system. With uh, combined with our uh, seats in the rear that has uh, the strikers and structure that to withhold and uh, contain the, the seat in, in position. So, would you see though opening that up to the so that you could go with different vehicles, different wheelchairs? Sure. So we of course we want to see this being standardized in, in, the, in the future of all the vehicles, uh, so that the the, the the wheelchair users can move about independently in, in, with their freedom. So we have had a couple of uh, wheelchair users coming yesterday and uh, they tried it out and saw it and they were in tears because there's such a high pa pain point uh, that was answered by this solution. So do you have a ramp that comes down as well or? Correct, we have a vehicle um, with a ramp built in. So when, and when the wheelchair user hails the vehicle, uh, it knows obviously and when it stops, it, it will deploy the ramp. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds and then you could go up to the ramp and then into the, the docking system by backing in. Uh, that talks, it takes about total two minutes. So today, you know, uh, any wheelchair um, onboarding experience is you know, like 15, 20 minutes of uh, somebody assisting with the anchors and tie downs and so forth. This is completely independent. You could do it on your own without anybody assisting. Do you envision it being low cost enough that it could be put in every vehicle or would it have to be like a one out of ten type thing? Sure, uh, we, obviously we want to make it affordable. Uh, so uh, it would we, you know, it would be competitive to any other motorized uh, wheelchairs. But we want to make it more uh, lightweight and of course uh, stronger uh, and so that and comfortable. Uh, our technology know-how is on the comfort uh, because we are a seating company. Uh, so uh, w uh, we made it very comfortable for the uh, users to use it not only for mobility but also throughout the day. 
And I meant the uh, your autonomous vehicle. Would all those be equipped with ramps? Do you envision that, or do you envision uh, one out of ten or yeah, something? So uh, obviously, there's going to be some costs associated with yeah. that. But because this is a, sh a ride share vehicle, so you're not you're not going to own the vehicle. So it's the company that's going to uh, manage the fleet. Just like airplanes, so airplane, you know, costs a lot of money. But what you pay as a user uh, individually is is affordable. So, and, and what do you envision for this? We haven't gotten in it yet, and I would like to go in it. But is it four, six seats? Yeah, it could be up to six, maybe, uh, but also uh, one or two. Uh, so today, you know, ninety percent of the vehicles uh, are occupied by only one or two persons. Ninety percent. Uh, so it doesn't really have to be that big. But there are occasions that we need to have, you know, more than uh, two per to people. So uh, we have uh, uh, what we call tailored space system and the entire interior module slide out to the back end of the vehicle and then can be reconfigured with the different modules. So we have different levels of experience. So like an airplane, you have a first class to business class to economy. Sure. Uh, same thing, you know, you have same vehicle and then you have different grades of experience that you can demand. So when you hail, you could specify business class at the service uh, hub. Uh, it will change from economy to business class in a you know, less than five minutes, and then you can. So literally, like a modular. It, it is modular. It yeah, modular swapping uh, system. Wow. Uh, not only that, the seats are also modular. Uh, so seat back, seat cushion, the armrest and uh, headrest, all the surfaces that come in contact with the con occupants uh, can be easily replaced. So that if it's damaged or soiled or uh, you know or, or cont you know, contaminated, uh, it can be easily changed by the service providers. So that it really enhances the overall user experience. Uh, instead, you know, because always everybody is concerned about, oh, is this clean enough for me? But you know, it, it is a lot more uh, manageable uh, to provide a clean air, not only the surface. Okay, so there's uh, air purification and so we forth. Have, we have a HVAC system that purifies the air, deodorize, filter, and also kills the bacteria. Uh, we have a built-in UVC lamp uh, system, so that within the containment of the HVAC system, it kills all the bacteria and viruses, provides the clean air to the occupants. And I would imagine there's in-camera cabins and so forth for safety and that sort of thing. Right. So we have cabin monitoring camera system as well as a, a biometric sensor system uh, built into the seat. So we're monitoring their heartbeat and their uh, we're thermal condition of the body and then expression as well. So uh, by having these inputs, we can figure out that if this person is com uh, having a discomfort or motion sickness or having a heart attack uh, so that we can provide the right type of uh, countermeasures uh, for their comfort. That's incredible and of course it's an all-electric uh, future with this vehicle right? Yeah so of course we are assuming that this is going to be based on EV architecture. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're going to have a flat floor. The connectivity uh, that's going to be available in the car architecture uh, obviously will work in sync with our system. Excellent well it, it, it looks like the future literally looks like the future and, and and i assume that you could also as part of the modules configure it to deliver boxes not just bottoms uh sure so uh we also imagine this type of vehicle can be configured for delivery as well as uh transporting uh humans now on the uh to my right which is to your left is a MOOCs concept and it's what we call x on wheel so x means anything it's going to be vehicle that has all the sort of a commercial space, right? So mm -hmm. instead of going to shops or restaurants or offices or karaoke, they will come to you. So we have configured this time, uh, this is a 3.5 version, so we have done third and a half version, uh, is a wellness space. Uh, so what that is, is if you're in a living in a, a city full of stress, uh, well, you can travel in our MOOCs and then actually it will measure your stress level and then uh, do some uh, experience that will calm your uh, stress down and then recover and then have some uh, fun in the vehicle. Excellent. Well, this is a fun show and it's all about fun, but it's also about helping people have a better exactly. quality of life. So it looks that's like right. you're on that path. Thank you very much. And we are, that's our vision to really uh, serve our um, technology to serve the, the society. Yeah. Excellent. Richard, thank you. Thank you.